The CRT I have today to show is a Mitsubishi XC-37250C. This is a very large presentation monitor. It's a 37 inch screen or 89 centimeters. So it's very, very large. The manufacturing date on the back is 1993 and the service manual I have for it has a print date of 1991. So that gives you a time frame for when this monitor came out. Um, there's a panel down the front there. The actual latch is missing to cover, but that's where your controls are located. There's your brand name badge there, Mitsubishi. Uh, the, the monitor, it's not a TV at all. It doesn't have any tuner in it. The monitor uh, does come with a wireless remote, but I didn't receive that when I bought this second hand, unfortunately. We'll go and have a look around it. The tube itself is, it's fairly curved. You get a bit of an idea there. It's fairly rounded. Um, the construction of this thing being um, a monitor, a presentation monitor is quite robust. It's actually um, fully metal. There's very little plastic in it. The colouring is somewhat like a military colouring. It's sort of got a desert, sandy looking theme to it. It's a bit old and dirty. Um, I've actually unscrewed the back cover here, which I'll take off shortly. It's all metal. Vents. Here's your um, ID and specs to a degree. There you go, Mitsubishi model number. One, 100 to 120 volts, 220 to 240 volts, that's switchable. There's your date there, October 93. Serial number. Now let's get a load of the connections on this. Being a presentation monitor, you're going to have a lot of inputs and various things like that. There's your selectable voltage. There's your power socket, IEC. And then we go to our connectors. You've got a um, couple of sets of um, B and C for RGB in. Red, green, blue. You've got vertical um, sync and horizontal sync and if you want composite you can go on there. There's another input, RGB2. Same deal as, as the B and C's but in this D sub connector. It's not your standard VGA type though, it's a two row job. I don't have any cables to hook that in into that one. Um, external source select, I think you can hook that up to a PC and control the TV or the monitor I should say from there. Here you've got composite in the form of either RCA or BNC as well as an S video and another video input, video 2, no S video with that one. Audio in and you can also hook up some uh, speakers to it, external speakers and audio out. The monitor does have an amp built in and a couple of speakers in it. I haven't actually tested it yet. We'll do that shortly. While here, I'll take the back cover off. It's already unscrewed, as I mentioned. There's even more, more shielding on the inside. Um, it's quite, it's quite a big, big setup in the back. You know, it's got a lot of boards, board sets over here, board sets over here. And board sets over here. It even has uh, um, a couple of fans. There's one in there, and there's another one down there on the bottom. So with a couple of fans going. Very big flyback transformer there. It's got three three knobs on the flyback. One for screen voltage, and then two for focus. Yeah, so there's a lot involved in it. Uh, it was pretty clean when I opened it up. The tube. Um, the tube's ID, it is a Mitsubishi tube, not surprising for this size. Uh, it's an M89, 89 is in 89 centimeter M designating it as an actual monitor tube. So that's about it. Um, and also there's the speakers. Presentation monitors don't always come with speakers. Don't expect them to crank up too loud, but gives you a basic sound option there. Alright, so let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Okay, the monitor's on now. It's warmed up. It's been on for a good 20 minutes. There's just a couple other things I want to point out. That's on the underside. I like these big presentation monitors, how they have their um, 
their feet or the spacing on the bottoms arranged unlike most television which don't have feet this thing's got great big feet and it's got um, handles that you can just see there so it makes for lifting them a lot easier um, than your typical television and they need to be um, designed like this because they weigh so much this beast here weighs 104 kilos and that's no joke with a 37 inch tube and all metal construction you can expect it to weigh something like that now I've got the Dreamcast plugged up via VGA now the specs for this monitor are um, its horizontal scanning rates starts at 24k and goes up to 60 something now 24 is, um, 24 is not something that I would often use you might use that on some arcade boards, some of the Atari stuff and some of Sega's Model 2 stuff. I've done a little bit of testing, but I can't get anything to um, show up on the screen in, in that 24K region. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't go down to 15K for the classic consoles, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to get this monitor. But, you know, it's bad luck. So at the moment, I'm just running 31K with the Dreamcast and... Um, you know, it's 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 not bad. We'll we'll have a close look at the picture in a moment. Um, uh, just having the Dreamcast on now, actually, the the Dreamcast picture doesn't quite fill up the screen. You can see there's probably about an inch inch of gap, inch of space, and an inch of space over there now. I've uh, I've gone through and done some adjustments here here in the um, control area. You've got that button set, and set brings up some things you can do with it horizontal phase vertical height vertical position uh, that purity is something I haven't really fiddled with before but it did help me get the picture looking better but um, here you've got horizontal width at max so I've set the horizontal width at maximum and the Dreamcast still doesn't quite fill the whole picture tubes visible area unfortunately PC is no problem that'll that'll fit in fine but we haven't got used to the full screen, unfortunately. Let's go into the game. As you can hear, I've got the sound of the Dreamcast plugged into the monitor. It's okay, nothing special. It um, gives you sound, just very basic, but that's okay. Um, as for the picture, it's pretty good, actually. Given the age of this monitor from 1993, it's, um, it's really, it really makes me think that it must have been serviced or maybe it's had a tube replaced at some stage because it's still got a fair bit of vibrancy in it and there's just no wobble or anything in the um, when you look closely at pixels and things you know the image is actually rock solid steady so it's in pretty good nick considering that it's 20 years old I'm going to put some test patterns up on the screen so we can have a have a bit more of a closer look particularly with some white screens and some convergence or geometry patterns but you know the Dreamcast does look pretty good I've got a PC hooked up displaying a white screen on the monitor and I've got this purity setting up on the screen to adjust. Now this purity setting has quite a big effect on the corners of the picture. If you see up there in the corner it's a bit dark. It's the same with all corners. They've got a little bit of darkness in them. And with this purity adjustment I can change it. I think it's just a case of me um, sitting here and watching till I can get it at the best I can it's so uh, you can fix up one corner and then you get darkness in the other so I think it's just a matter of finding a balance it's trying to balance it out into all the corners I don't think I'm going to get pure white everywhere unfortunately but I'll keep having a go at it the geometry on the monitor is not bad the red line is not visible in the corners there down the bottom and it's a bit out of sorts just up there as well but pretty good considering the size and the lines are converged quite well you can't really see any of that red green or blue escaping out from the white there is a bit yeah, you can see that blue stripe in the middle on the right but not bad for the size of the thing focus of the tube is pretty good too obviously the center text is going to be the easiest to read and it's quite clear the corner text is where the challenge is, but even that is still quite clear. At the very bottom left corner, it does start to blur, but it's better than some I've seen. Nokia Test Suite, which is the program I use amongst others to display patterns on the screen, has this more pattern coming up through its test. 
Not sure how that's going to impact upon your viewing. It will depend on what sort of content you're showing, but you can see those vertical green and sort of pinky purpley wavy lines there. I don't think that's ideal, but I don't think that'll have much impact in the long run. Here's Windows XP desktop. Actually, I should uh, I should point out that I, I can't actually get the screen fully stretched horizontally to fill it. It's much better than the Dreamcast, but there's probably about a centimetre of black there that I should be able to stretch out to, but I can't. And basically, um, the only issue, the two issues of the monitor is the horizontal width doesn't quite stretch out as far as what you would like and the purity issues with um, the corners being a little dirty or dark you know the white screen I had up before I, I can't really adjust it to get uniform whiteness across the screen so there is a bit of a compromise there but the image is pretty sharp and convergence is good and geometry is good so I'm surprised that it's not a bad unit uh, unfortunately it doesn't scan down to the 15 kilohertz range which would be good for all the old consoles that run RGB but that's the chance you take. Uh, Mitsubishi did actually produce quite a number of monitors of this size, believe it or not. Uh, you're not going to... I don't think there's going to be many around. They would have been used in studios and so forth, but um, there are a number that do do 15 kilohertz and above, so they'd be probably better to keep an eye out for rather than this one. But I think it's a shame that any of these big old monitors get thrown out because they're so unique. Um, anyhow, that's about it on this one. just thought I'd show you that and put it on camera get it on record and it's not a bad unit but anyway um, next time I've got something else to show you of equal size I'll just give you a quick little preview now uh, same size but um, here you go big big Grundig there big 89 centimeter Grundig and I'll probably do that on the next video so keep an eye out for that and thank you for watching